I am Phil Brock. This is Brock and your block, and I'm sitting in one of my favorite restaurants today. It's on Main Street, it's historic, and it's the galley. To everyone in Santa Monica, you're Captain Ron, and we're inside the galley where it looks like it's Christmas all year long. Tell me about yourself. Came out here in 71, I'm gonna be a stand-up comedian. Never had the courage, never had the talent, so I had to find something to do. I got into real estate, I liked it, made some money, got real lucky, wound up in the fast food business called Snacks Fifth Avenue. I opened up a bunch of them and I got sued by Saks Fifth Avenue and they sort of took the wind out of my sails. But I used to come to the galley in the early 80s with my friends, men's night out. We used to play bumper pool in the back. The place was so... Wait, there was a bumper pool table here? There was a bumper pool table here. And these were the days when you could smoke cigars inside a restaurant. And we used to smoke cigars and drink the place was kind of dirty, so the only thing we'd ever eat would be salad. We had the same waitress every single time. Her name was Millie. I was in the fast food business, and I sold a ton of salad, but I really liked the dressing here. And I said to Millie, where do you guys buy this dressing? And she says, uh, we make it ourselves. I said, how do you make it? She says, I'm not telling you. I kept coming back here, and every time we came back, Millie was the waitress. And one night, I left her a really big tip. And I said, come on, Millie, how do you make that salad dressing? And she had all the plates in her hand because there was no busboys here. And she dropped all the plates on the table and she said, if you want to know so bad, why don't you buy the, and she was a dirty word, and I was shocked. I was so embarrassed, I never came back to the galley. I found out that the restaurant was in disrepair years later. I came in here one night and there was an old woman sitting at the bar. She was about 86 years old and a bartender. Nobody else was in the restaurant. And I said to her, she's smoking a cigarette, I said, who owns the place? And she says, my, my brother, he's 89, but he's in a rest home. So I'm running it for him. I said, well, can I buy it? And she, she, she almost choked on a cigarette, and she said, who the hell would want to buy this place? And I said, I would. And she said, are you serious? I said, yeah. And I said, what do you want for it? She told me, and I said, okay, we got a deal. But the deal was that I paid for the place, and I couldn't come back in until escrow closed. So escrow closed December 31st, 1988. January 1st, 1989 was my first day. January 2nd, staff is right in front waiting for me to come in because they heard the place sold. And Millie, the waitress who had waited on me 10 years earlier, who threw the plates on the table, she was there and she said, oh my God, it's the toll that wanted to sell it. <laughs> And I, 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 was here, I wasn't here two minutes and already she called me like a dirty word. I, I couldn't believe it. She said, well, I guess you're my new boss. And she sort of gave me a peck on the cheek. I cannot fry an egg. I had a, a margarita in my life. I really didn't know nothing about the restaurant business. You bought this restaurant. Now this restaurant opened when? Opened in 1946 at this location. In 1934, it was on the Santa Monica Pier. So the galley opened originally in 1934 on the pier? Yes. Same name? Yes. In fact, a lot of the artifacts scattered throughout the galley came from the original location. And it moved here after World War II. How many different owners have there been in the history of the restaurant? Two. Me, oh! Ralph Steffen, my name is Ron Schur. Mm -hmm. His wife was blonde, and her name was Tony. At the time, my wife was blonde, and her name was Tony. And this place opened in 1946, the year I was born. It was sort of like meant to be. So the restaurant was more of a dive bar back when you bought it. I, dive is a really good word for it. <laughs> and it's changed, but it still is a community gathering spot. Uh, yeah, we have a lot, I mean a lot of locals. As you know, I've been doing this 1934 night for 20 some odd years. Because I asked Millie, what's the slowest night of the year? And she said the night before Thanksgiving. I said, well, let's do something special. Uh, we celebrate the anniversary every year of the galley by rolling back the prices to 1934. So a steak dinner is 85 cents. Which, by the way, I've been here a couple of times for 1934 night, and it is loaded. The, the place is packed. Every notable Santa Monica is here. And just locals who you don't necessarily see all the time, you bring together a great assortment of people from Ocean Park and throughout the city. This restaurant's been here for years. It is really a monument in Santa Monica. It is the oldest continuously operated restaurant in the city right now. It's the oldest restaurant and bar throughout uh, West Los Angeles. 
I take a lot of pride in, 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 in being the second owner. The original owner had it 54 years. So I sort of feel like Cal Ripken. I want to I wanna beat him. So I got to live a couple more years. I, I've owned it 26 years. Uh, here's the big question. Is the salad dressing recipe still the same? Exactly the same. I didn't get the recipe until about a year later. One day I'm sitting at the bar sipping a glass of wine. Millie comes up to me and she puts something in my hand. I had no idea what it was, and it was a recipe to the salad dressing, and she said, you're not a bad guy, which is one of the nicest things she's oh. ever said to anybody, because she threw around compliments like they were manhole covers. She was tough. That becomes endearing to the people who come in. They're not treated especially differently than they would be anywhere else. They're treated like family. And, and really, a good restaurant is supposed to be a place that you come to, to have that feeling of a home away from home. Yeah, I start every meeting and I tell the staff, we're not, we are not in the restaurant business. We're in the be back business. Our job is to get everybody that comes in here to come back. And oh, I like that's, that. That, for example, if a couple's holding hands, a waitress bring up a, a brownie with a little candle and say, you're the most romantic couple that's been here all night. And you try to leave people with a warm, fuzzy feeling when they walk out the door. So they say, there is something special at the galley. And I think that's one of the keys to surviving. It's the staff I've hired, the staff. We have people, I have two guys in the kitchen who've been here 26 years. Mm. I have a, a bartender that's been here 18 years. And it's like family. It's like, uh, it's, it, it's like a second family to me. And I come in and I see all these regulars and it makes me feel good. And it gives me a chance to practice my art of comedy because I go up to a table of two and I make them laugh and I walk away. If you've never been in the galley, Every square inch is covered by pictures, by writing, by different artifacts, life preserver up uh, in front of me here. There's things all throughout the galley. This is the romantic booth. Tell me about the meaning of this booth in the restaurant. It's booth number one. It is. This is my favorite booth in the restaurant when I have dinner. And it is the romantic booth because my mom and dad are up there, and a letter that my father wrote to my mother during World War II asking her to get married is up there. I had a big party on their 59th anniversary, and I had a really good friend of mine, a musician, put every word to original music, and he sang it to my mother just as it was written out on the patio, and we must have had 50 or 60 family guests. After the guy sang the song, there wasn't a dry eye in the house, and my father said, I'd like to say something. I mailed that letter during World War II. I must have sent out 50 copies. Your mother was the only one that answered. <laughs> I love that. that. And you said your mother is still alive. Yes. And you have lunch with her once or twice a week. At least. At least. Yes. That's fantastic. I imagine after all these years in Santa Monica that to many people, each booth has meaning. Each spot on the patio, each spot at the bar has meaning because I'm sure customers come in and request their own special table where their special moments happen. That's true. Every single table has some sort of memorabilia that customers have brought in and asked me to put up on the wall. And they get real proud of it and they call it their booth and they always want to sit in their booth and it feels like home. Everything here has something special and that's why I I get such a warm, fuzzy feeling, and I feel so blessed every day that I walk in here. I feel like I am, I walk down the street and people call me, hey, Captain Ron, and, and it's, a, it's a great feeling. I think nowhere else I can think of is any place like Main Street in Santa Monica, because it has a certain vibe, a certain feeling to it. And we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it a place for community. I'm a big believer in that. Are a lot of the artifacts you said are from the original owner. These posters were mailed to the galley when it was on the pier. I was lucky enough to find them in a big box. And they were addressed to the galley, Santa Monica Pier. And I opened them and I found about 15 of these World War II, uh, what they used to call propaganda posters. It helped keep the war effort alive. My favorite poster is it is in the back room. It's the uh, posters of the Sullivans. And a lot of people aren't aware of the Sullivan Law, which since the Sullivans all died on the same boat, they don't let brothers on the same boats anymore because a mom lost five of her children on one, on one bad day during World War II. This came off the Santa Monica Pier. 
Oh, clam chowder. Made from fresh clams. I love that. And you see that picture in the left-hand corner? That model standing next to it? Yeah. So that was on the Santa Monica Pier. That was taken in the 50s. I know Errol Flynn came there. Oh. Because uh, one day I had an elderly gentleman come in the galley, and he's looking at the ceiling. And I, after about three minutes, I go up to him and say, what are you looking for? And he said, I was sitting at the bar one night, and Errol, Errol Flynn's gun went off and made, it went right through, a uh, bullet hole went right through the ceiling. Millie, Millie worked at this restaurant 30 years, and she knew everybody. And uh, as it turned out, when she left the galley, she was like 74 years old, and she called me up on a Friday night. And it was very unlike her, and she said, Ron, I'm not feeling well. I went to her apartment, and uh, she was having a heart attack. I decided in one second I'm going to take it to the hospital. I took it to Santa Monica Hospital and they actually brought it back to life. It was amazing. Six months later, I took Millie out to lunch and she looked terrific. And I said, how do you feel? She says, I, I feel terrific. But just, it was just a very uh, touching moment. So you and uh, Snug Harbor and a few other places are the only places with real history in the city. Of course, Shay J. But uh, Shay J also brings people to Santa Monica. And it's a, both of you are great ways to celebrate our city. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's what makes me get up in the morning and work hard every day because I want to be better than Shay J. I want to be better than any other restaurant on the street. We're faced in Santa Monica with development. We're faced with the changing, rapidly changing face of Santa Monica. This type of restaurant is part of the glue, the fabric, the thread of our community. These are restaurants, places to be celebrated in our city because in many cases, we're losing a lot of what made Santa Monica a real community. So thank you, Ron, for keeping this restaurant going. I uh, thank you, and I wanna tell you what I hear, one of the comments I hear almost every night. One person will tell me, uh, my wife and I, we didn't feel like going out to dinner tonight, so we decided to come to the gap. <laughs> Which, which means you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a great visit to the galley, another Santa Monica historic restaurant. This restaurant should be a landmark restaurant in Santa Monica. So Landmarks Commission, it's time to get on this. Let's landmark the galley. For Brock and your block, I'm Phil Brock. We'll see you next time.